Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another weekly update and things going on in DCS world. I'm your host, Prickly Hedgehog. Join me now as we talk about the A10C2, which was, was, has actually received uh, some more updates and is close to release. And I'm looking forward to that. Some exciting things about that aircraft right now. Also, of course, the F-18 received a little bit more adjustment, some things to the air-to-ground radar. Some bug squashing there. Tactical Pascal is doing a 24-hour live stream event again. Uh, he's raising awareness about mental health, which of course is no joke at this time. And lastly, a little bit of a stoush in the community between Razbam, Eagle Dynamics, and some community members who were questioning whether or not the Harrier should have been pushed out of early access and who was responsible for that. It was a little bit of a storm in a teacup. I don't want to get uh, too dramatic on you here or create uh, unnecessary clickbait. But there was some interesting discussion, hopefully, that has been or will be resolved as we move forward. But uh, let's start with the ATNC and where that's at. Now, Eagle Dynamics have said they've done quite a lot of work on that. And they were, they've been checking the flight models, buffet and stall Im implementation, excuse me, instantaneous turn rate and sustained turn rate as well as the maximum speed at different altitudes. Now these checks they uh, conducted enabled them to measure the parameters of the f uh, flight manual charts uh, against a, uh, the flight manual charts, excuse me, with a precision to within 3%, which is, uh, I guess, pretty good. If I'm not mistaken, beg to differ if you know more. Um, what they actually found was that the uh, buffeting affects the airframe at a lower angle of attack than is stated in the manual. Now this affected the aircraft handling during deliberate stalling. So they're working on this issue which will result in a significant improvement over all aircraft behavior in this phase of, fl of flight, which is pretty exciting. Now in parallel, many of the new systems are now functioning or functional, including the Laser Maverick, the APKWS, and the GBU-54 LJDAM. Work continues on, this is really exciting too, the helmet-mounted queuing system, which I did not know the A-10 had. I'm very, very excited about that. Gosh, this makes this uh, aircraft just extra, extra cool that it has that as well. Obviously, they will um, update the associated HOTAS commands and uh, updating the cockpit and external art really really cool i this aircraft is calling me right now it is begging me to buy it when it comes out which is likely to happen i have barely flown this aircraft and i don't know why it it generates a visceral reaction in me that i need to get behind the wheel the stumbling block of course is that it does have quite a steep learning curve nevertheless the flying characteristics of the aircraft are quite endearing in many ways obviously it's a an aircraft designed to loiter it has a tremendous amount of firepower and these little updates i think are going to be very very beneficial for improving the the general realism of this particular uh simulator and i think uh, there's quite a few people out there that have built a10 um warthog cockpits and i guess the, this kind of thing is is probably news to their ears uh, really really cool aircraft that's the problem with dcs though isn't it there's so many cool aircraft and some of them are so involved that it just it takes years off your life just trying to to learn all the systems and then when you start making headway you know you spend a few weeks on one aircraft and then you have to go back to another aircraft and you've kind of forgot what you've learned uh, i've said this before in another video this this game will absorb your time um, and your mental capacity, and also you, uh, will absorb money out of your <laughs> bank account uh, faster than um, children uh, in terms of maintaining your hobby. But nevertheless, there are worse ways of spending your weekends and your evenings, I have to say, because it is a, a great mental challenge and can be a lot of fun. So anyway, I wax lyrical. Uh, looking forward to this aircraft. I know a lot of you said uh, similar things last week. You know, there's a lot you can say about this aircraft, and I uh, I do enjoy it. I really do. I think it is a great aircraft, and because of its uh, level of completion, it's well worth picking up um, if you're you know frustrated with some of the other modules that perhaps aren't quite ready yet or haven't quite delivered. It's just a different type of flying. All right, we will stop there. We'll move on to the F-18C. So just a little bit of an update here to the air-to-ground radar. Nothing major. I say that, nothing major. Of course, we know that Eagle Dynamics are working extremely hard that is enough from you, thank you. Look at that. Things. Good lord. I'm sorry. Um, but we know that uh, Eagle Dynamics are working extremely hard on all of the bug fixing and a lot of these aircraft to bring them up to spec. But there's a lot to a lot to do and a lot more to go. So, um, as I said, the air-to-ground radar hitting fixtures overlapping. 
Good lord. There's a bunch of aircraft flying over here right now. They're just shaking the house. I apologize. I don't know what was happening there. Okay, let me start that again. So the air to ground radar, they've done some fixing here for the uh, heading fixtures overlapping, then switching from map to EXP123. Other strange behavior when switching between air to ground radar, EXP modes, and air to air radar has now been resolved. When unlimited weapons mode is activated, who does that? Unlimited weapons mode. Uh, the salvo ripple replenishment levels now display correctly. Th threat circles on the SA page now show. And they're back. Even if the threat icon is not visible. I don't know if you'll hear that through the recording, but anyway, it sounds like there's a plane buzzing my house running um, attack runs. The SAM threat rings uh, draw order on the SA page has been fixed. Swapping HSI SA on left and right. Uh, MDIs now functions correctly, which is cool. And this I noticed the other day too. A fuel transfer issue from external tanks has also been fixed. Radio volume issues uh, and the COM AM FM change on the UFC has been fixed. The throttle HOTAS Warthog and VPC Warbird and MT50 now have updated presets, which is cool too. So that brings us to the end of the module updates. So just a smaller patch, no major patch this week, but stand by, it. another major patch will occur as they continue to squash bugs and move through. At some point, we'll probably reach a period where these uh, patches are going to be smaller, which will be exciting until we, you know, um, have a new aircraft introduced or some other major update, new map. Or what I'm really looking forward to, of course, is the uh, introduction of the uh, frame rate improvements whereby the uh, software is able to take advantage of modern hardware processes um, and architecture especially with the 3000 series or 30 uh, series graphics cards coming out from nvidia in about a week's time we're getting the 3080 so um, eagle dynamics have some work to do to you know keep up with the modern architecture unfortunately but hopefully that will occur and we can all reap the benefits of that which i'm sure will occur it's just a matter of time and again i've said this before the game stacks up fairly well when you consider what uh, was able to be released on for most people running microsoft flight simulator simulator 2020 uh, which is no question about it um, a, you know a really interesting game in terms of the graphics and some of the things that they've achieved with weather and, and lighting um, and also the real-time uh, flying capability, mapping the entire world, those kinds of things. Pretty remarkable achievement. But again, uh, when you consider the niche element of DCS and what they're actually trying to achieve, I think they've done a pretty nice job. The game still stacks up fairly well, considering the limitations of the hardware um, um, access, if you like, that the software is able to make use thereof. So anyway, I digress. Uh, Tactical Pascal. And the 24-hour live stream event, which is being hosted, I believe, by um, Eagle Dynamics. It starts at 1900Z hours today. Um, you can find more information. I will put up a link to T Tactical Pascal's uh, YouTube. He usually uh, streams on YouTube, if I remember rightly. Great guy. Uh, I think he's a former RAF pilot from memory. And, of course, with uh, mental, health, uh, mental uh, illness and mental health issues, uh, the prevalent of you know society's issues right now in terms of the stress of COVID and all those kinds of things. It's uh, something that can't be scoffed at. Certainly shouldn't be something that is um, uh, made fun of um, or denigrated in any way. It is something that can affect a lot of people. Um, if you're in a stressful job like I am, um, you know, anxiety, stress can really be quite crippling. And for a lot of people too, if you're like me, I like to keep my work life separate as much as possible. I find DCS is a nice panacea for doing that uh, because my, my mind is totally focused on flying, not uh, work-related things. Although you probably heard my phone that I was yelling at there before going off. Probably work, you know. So uh, I'm working from home right now. Um, and work can really intrude in that bubble, bubble. So that can be stressful for a lot of people. And of course, that's really minor compared to a lot of other things that people are, are dealing with right now with COVID and job losses and, um, you know, uh, potential evictions and all sorts of interesting things that are going on right now that are very, very stressful for people as we as we try to make hidden sense of the world that we're in. So anyway, I won't uh, dwell on that for much longer. Let's talk about the last thing here, which was a little bit of a blow up in the community with regards to the Harrier. Now, the Harrier was apparently moved categorically, if you like, out of early access to a complete module. And very quickly, people started pointing out, wait a minute, this module isn't complete. 
And so there was some discussion about that and whether it was complete or not. These arguments kind of ensued and there were some commentators from uh, Razbam Studios saying, no, you know, the aircraft is complete as it can be right now. There are not all of the systems within the aircraft can legally um, be recreated. The aircraft is a working model for the U.S. Marine Corps. It's not a... Uh, aircraft that's, um, you know, uh, been mothballed, even though the RAF is, uh, and the Navy, excuse me, is not, um, the Royal Navy, that is, is not using it. It is being used by the U.S. Uh, Marine Corps, uh, and it's still a fighting platform. So it's a, it's a current aircraft. And so um, not all systems were modeled. Um, and some things were, you know, will be implemented in due time as things become available with Eagle Dynamics who are working on, on weapons and other bits and pieces related there too. So there was this, this <laughs> kind of finger pointing and accusations and got kind of a little little titchy there. The, um, <laughs> the, uh, some of the questions were, you know, well, who's responsible for bringing it out of early access if it wasn't ready? And, um, you know, Rasband was basically saying, well, Eagle Dynamics actually is responsible for that. And then, uh, Eagle Dynamics apparently were saying, well, no third-party developers are responsible for bringing, you know. So <laughs> so there was all this sort of toing and froing, and, and uh, the, the bottom line is, you know, there's a little bit of a communication issue here in terms of uh, how to present that information to the uh, public, if you like, or the, uh, the paying customers, and, um, and how they receive that information. And, you know, it, I don't want to get into it too much, in terms of you know creating more fights or uh, I know some people have been very critical of Raspam um, on my channel saying well you know they they have all these fantastic modules but none of them are complete and you know I'm not holding my breath for these other ones that are coming out who cares what they're doing I'm only you know so well you know you can't please everybody the bottom line is that I'm actually fairly impressed with some of the modules that they have produced uh, the Harrier I don't fly the Harrier very much it's just one of those things it's just uh, I just haven't had the time. Um, I've been focused on other aircraft, but um, when I have flown it, I've been very, very impressed with it. I think it's a unique aircraft, of course, in the game, given you have the VTOL capability. I think the um, level of work that they have achieved with that aircraft is quite phenomenal. It's um, a lot of fun to fly, and it's very challenging to fly as well because of the VTOL capacity. Landing that is not necessarily easy. It is, um, you know, it incorporates elements of a helicopter, but you've got to be so careful with it because of the tippy nature of, of it. It doesn't fly like a helicopter in that sense, even though you are, um, you know, mimicking some of the flight characteristics of a helicopter. It's not the same thing at all. So it's actually very challenging to fly. Um, it has, uh, you know, Good capacity for carrying quite a lot of weapons. It's a you know it's a ground mud mover. It's a ground pounder type uh, aircraft. So it doesn't have the you know high speed or the uh, um, um, air to air capability. Excuse me of these other aircraft. Nevertheless, it forms like the A10 a unique function in the game, and in a certainly I'm looking forward to it in a um, dynamic campaign theater where there will be specific roles for for these kinds of aircraft in that kind of you know working environment. So um, again, you know the aircraft I think is very very cool. I think it's a it was an ambitious prog project. They have a lot of stuff in the pipeline. They are working on the MiG twenty three. They are working on the F fifteen E Strike Eagle, which is another mud mover, of course, or the mud hen as it's affectionately known. Uh, they're working on a plethora of ships and aircraft and other objects and a map for the Falklands conflict, which I think is going to be very, very popular and you know, an interesting period in our history. Um, so, and that conflict alone is, 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 is very, very interesting. I mean, the, the challenges and obstacles of the Royal Navy and the uh, Royal Air Force and the... Uh, um, you know, Royal Marines who were down there, the paratroopers. Uh, logistically, the Falklands is a really interesting conflict. I mean, they basically pulled together a task force within four days. So you imagine the amount of work that went on to get a, a team together of ships, a flotilla, if you like, of ships and aircraft to get down there to, uh, you know, protect British sovereignty at the time. 
um, is is a is a really interesting conflict, and they're working on Razorbone's working on that. And you know, I don't know where they're at with it. They have always said that whatever you see is not necessarily an indicator of anything pending or about to be released, but it's an ambitious project again. So. I'm not critical of them. Um, they're working on cool stuff. They re they really are. They're working on things that I think a lot of people are interested in. And uh, while many of, of you out there, and I know a lot of people, uh, they want stuff yesterday. Um, the hazard of doing that is that stuff isn't finished. You know, and I, it's kind of a, a funny thing this community because it's like, well, you know, this piece of shite aircraft isn't complete. You know, the F-16, for example. You release this aircraft and it wasn't ready. Half the systems aren't done. Blah 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 blah. Um, when is it going to be finished? You know, the F-18, you've been working on it for two years. It's not finished yet. What's going on? And the degree of detail in these aircraft, um, when you consider how long they were in development to produce and how many people they have working on them, I mean, Eagle Dynamics and some of these third-party studios do a pretty decent job of recreating, in my opinion, um, aircraft that we want to fly. Um, and at the end of the day, I don't know, because I'm not a pilot, nor am I a combat pilot, the difference between how realistic it is and the real thing, and what or what is not missing, short of actually going through a manual and a um, you know a nomenclature of the aircraft to determine what is and what is not missing. There's no way that I could tell. And my degree of uh, finesse is, is uh, and sophistication or knowledge is just not there for that kind of thing. So I'm accepting. A degree of realism within the constraints of the you know the 3d modeling and the physics of this of this engine and the fact that it's a simulator and not the real thing so when people get ridiculously nitty-gritty on some of this stuff i i don't know if there's a value necessarily in that if the aircraft can be modeled to within you know the flight parameters can be modeled within three percent as equal dynamics was saying before i think we've got a pretty realistic sim and i know for a fact that there are pilots out there that have said it's pretty realistic and if a, a real pilot says it's pretty realistic that's good enough now okay that doesn't answer the other issues in terms of and i said i wasn't going to get into this didn't i and here i am um that being said you know i i get it that people want stuff and uh are waiting and we've 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 got quite a lot of aircraft to choose from. Um, there are things missing in this game, and I think really the only one that I'm really missing, one of the things I'd really like to see is the dynamic campaign. I think bottom line, that will make a big difference to this game in terms of engageability, and I've said this many, many times before. That, for me, everything else is just icing on the cake. And if Rasbam takes two more years to complete the, the flogger, then so be it it won't detract from my enjoyment of, of the aircraft that i have right now and maybe it'll give me more time to get into the other aircraft that i haven't had time to fly so my two cents let me know your thoughts below uh as we wrap up here let's wrap it up i just want to thank everybody for the likes and subscribes recently we actually hit 3,000 subscribers so the channel is growing ever so smallly uh that's not a right word ever so small and small steps uh, it is um it is growing and I really appreciate it. It's helping me, you know, build the uh, content that I need. And I'll continue to do that and expand, especially over the winter now as we uh, start moving into battening down the hatches here in the northern part of uh, the United States. The cold tundra of Minnesota where I am right now is, uh, is uh, starting to show signs of, of fall and uh, winter. I had some nice cool days recently where I actually lit the fire for the first time. So. Looking forward to winter and being able to do a little bit more with the channel and get some more videos out there as I wrap up my own projects. So again, I just want to thank you so much and it really means a lot trying to get the channel growing. Um, you have no idea how much work these videos can be and they're not perfect always. I know my video the other day where I was comparing uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 to DCS World in Syria where I took off with the F-14 and then I jumped into one of the... Um, I don't know, one of the sisters, I think, one of the um, uh, commercial aircraft and tried to do the same thing and there was a lot of suggestions and helpful comments, some <laughs> perhaps not so helpful, but, you know, it's a lot of work to pull these things together to get these ideas and not copy off other people. Coming up with new and original content is actually quite challenging, so, uh, and it's also very time consuming as my wife will complain to you, so, um, yeah, so again, I just want to thank you all. So don't forget now to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. 
and uh, it helps it keep chugging along. As I said, I will continue Patreon probably as we move forward if this is a con upwards um, trend for the channel, just to help uh, you know keep things going along because um, it's a lot of work, like I said. All right, enough. Thank you again. Stay flying, stay safe out there, good luck, uh, watch some Tactical Pascal, support him and mental health, it's really important. And carry on flying out there guys. This is Prickly Hedgehog out for another week. We'll see you next time. Unlock the afterburning harrier mod. Land your harrier into the side of a skyscraper without damaging your plane or the building. You're ready for it. Go for it. You can do it.